get this team fired up against USC. High hopes for both teams to start the season. Matt Leiner stepping in for Carson Palmer, the Heisman winner. This is the Tigers' first offensive possession. Jason Campbell picked off by Darnell Bing. Turnovers, staple of the USC defense under Pete Carroll. And now it's Leiner to Mike Williams. You know, Leiner dates a pro surfer, Veronica Kate. He's just riding the wave, hanging six, and then the extra point made it seven. Carlos Dansby annihilating Kevin Arvid on the punt return. Just get away from it. Don't even handle it. There's a one highlight I saw from Auburn. Uh, there wasn't much going on for the Tigers. USC playing terrific defense. Jason Leach. Oh, greetings, Courtney Taylor. A lot of guys lost hats on this Saturday. Taylor was okay. Pass was incomplete. The Auburn offense was not okay because Matt Grudegood back there in Jason Campbell's grill. Grudegood was very good. Ben Obamanu is a fine young receiver for the Tigers, but that football must be riveted to your rib cage. And it is not. The strip leads to a field goal in the Carroll era. USC's turnover margin yes. better than anyone. 1.33 on the positive side. Six sacks, three turnovers forced. Campbell harassed, harried, sacked. Juan Ramsey forcing it. Wild Bunch, two, and their backups having their way. With Monrico Crittenden in the Auburn offensive line. Herschel Dennis busted free. Now you see him, now you don't. He keeps the legs moving, and the offensive lineman keeps their hats on the defenders and their legs moving. He rolls into the score. Carroll happy as well he should be. Goes in against a very good team from the SEC. Hostile environment, and the Trojans dominate. 23 to nothing. Auburn with just 37 yards rushing, held well under 200 yards for the day. And problems on playmakers, but you know, it's a little bit cleaner. There's Clarence suspended. Andy Geiger said for not being forthcoming with NCAA investigators. Geiger, the Ohio State AD. Chris Gamble, a short bet. First down, 15 yards, same drive. Perez's replacement, one of them to start. Maurice Hall into the end zone. But I thought the running backs did a decent job. But the story of this game for me, not only the Ohio State defense, but Craig Krenzel. You see him here, a nice touch pass. There's Michael Jenkins. Craig Krenzel was terrific, not only throwing the football, but running it with his feet, Mark. And just smart decisions right here. Here's the pump fake. He doesn't find anyone open. He starts to scramble. Now he looks to pick up blockers down the field. Look at everybody hustle down the field to play. I love the extra effort by Krenzel and company. Smart in the classroom, smart on the football field, Craig Krenzel. Look at the blockers. That's just amazing. That is all out team hustle and commitment. That's Jim Tressel coaching right there, boys. Guys, he's a better athlete than he gets credit for, too. Krenzel looks like a new man back there, not just playing to make sure he doesn't turn the ball over for the Buckeyes, but making plays on offense. Krenzel's second touchdown on the ground, and Ohio State's rolling at the shoe. Hey, look, Antonio Holmes is open there. There is a guy that could get back in him. Krenzel plays it safe and makes the play. That's what he does. He doesn't make stupid decisions. That's why he's a terrific quarterback for this team. It's not just Maurice Hall backing up Clarence. I Dell Ross running through tackles. 15 yards. Ohio State. The Ohio State oh. University. What about Bryce Bishop? That's a nice pancake block. Now talk to him when you're standing over there. Clarence observing. That was pleased what he saw from his comrades. Ohio State against Washington. Washington under Keith Gilbertson now 28 to 9. The Buckeyes open on the right foot. Down at Clemson. Mark Rick leading the dogs into Death Valley. Got their first SEC title in 20 years. Didn't take long for David Green to find Fred Gibson. You know, David Green looked so comfortable. The offensive line, we talked about all the guys missing. New guys did a terrific job for David Green. 16-0. See that zero Clemson's got? Georgia missing three defensive starters. And depending on what package you go with, four of their top seven defensive backs out because of injuries. Of course, Rick had to suspend eight guys. Young Blood losing his helmet there. Whitehurst now trying to throw a screen, and David Pollock is there. David Pollock making a play again. That would lead to a David Green touchdown for the Dogs in a 23-0 game. 
quarterback rotation okay with you now? It's okay because you're up 23 to nothing. You gotta let the young man get in the game, and when he does that, I let him play all the time. The bottom line is Clemson, not good, Mark. Not impressed at all with this football team playing at home. Georgia, the number nine ranked team in the country, absolutely dominated this Clemson football team. If you're Tommy Bowden, you've got to look at yourself in the mirror and find out what you're doing wrong. You're supposed to be a balanced offense. You came out and said you're going to run the ball more. Well, they got stuffed today. 35 yards. Embarrassing loss for Clemson. Not embarrassing to lose it, but the manner. Horn Huskers, all of those 800 or so Letterman back for the Oklahoma State game. And Josh Fields hits the All-American Rashawn Woods. 29 yards, first down deep in Husker land, and then Fields finds Woods again. A good technique, just gets in the end zone with his big body. It looked like it was going to be a long day for the black shirt defense. You see this? Uses his body, gets in the end zone. Easy touchdown for Oklahoma State. After that initial start, Cowboy offense will be shut down. Sandro DeAngelis misses one off and upright for the Huskers, and then later... Toe meets leather, leather meets arms, blocked. One for three on field goal attempts. That defense would step up. Tatum Bell puts it on the ground. Here comes Rude with the recovery and treating the guests rudely, you might add, by scoring on them. Then Fields back there, getting drilled. Big Ryan Bingham Bingham. picking it up for the Huskers and then Josh Davies. That's the fullback Nebraska needs. Low to the ground, power it in behind that big offensive line, get the touchdown. 17 to 7, Nebraska just shut down that powerful Oklahoma State offense. Rashawn Woods just five catches for 47 yards. And you look at the turnaround that Nebraska has had defensively. Bo Pelini's a new defensive coordinator there. Stats from 2002 and what they did against Oklahoma State. Get back to playing big orange football. That means power running, play action passing, and the J-train Jabari Davis. The counter tray, great blocking at the point of attack, and Jabari Davis hits the hole downfield, 44 yards for the touchdown. And he got him softened up inside, so what do you do? Well, you just pitch it to the outside. Here, Clawson pitches it to Cedric Houston. Nice blocking, cuts back across the game. Reads his blocks, 25-yard game. 19 carries, 167 yards for now, Cedric Houston. If you're Houston. a punter, put your head on head the on swivel. swivel. Head no! Out. No! Oh, that headgear's coming out. Well, his helmet's on a swivel now, but it's off his head. Cross into it, Gerald Rick, yet another in that stable of running backs that the balls had. You know, I blocked for his father. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Uh, showing your age. Runs just like his name. So you run it. Yep. What does that mean you can do now? Pass is play Thank action you. pass. And there's Tony Brown in the corner of the end zone. 21 nothing Tennessee playing Tennessee type football. Casey Clawson threw for a couple of touchdowns. Davis and Houston both with big days combining for up around 250 yards. More than that when you toss in what Riggs did. 24 to 6. Tennessee looked a lot more like the Volunteers on Saturday. Alabama and South Florida, the debut of Mike Shula, the head coach of the Crimson Tide. First quarter, Ronnie Banks has his team up 7-0. Ball should have been caught, and then it was caught by Charlie Pepra. Pick six, 52 yards. Alabama has it tied up at seven, Legion Field. In the third quarter, Alabama had a flurry at the end of the first half to get back in the game. Great blocking by the return team for Shawn Williams. And what a job of setting the picket fence and following your blockers. Terrific vision by Sean Williams. Tremendous blocking down the field to play. Come watch. He picks and pokes and picks and pokes. Fouls his blockers. Takes it all the way into the school. The first punt return for a touchdown for Alabama since Freddie Millen's did it against UCLA in that opener before the Mike DeVos era came crashing down. Shield was a winner in his first game. 40-17. to 17. Alabama has Oklahoma coming up next. And, of course, Alabama, their old coach in Aggieland. The Dennis Franchoni era starting Texas A&M against Arkansas State. Following an Arkansas State field goal, Terrence Murphy. Terrence Murphy's got some speed. Takes the kickoff back 60 yards. That led to an Aggie field goal to make it 6-3. Courtney Lewis, young red shirt freshman going in for Fran's team. 16-3, the Aggies have the lead. And then Lewis, once again, you know Franchoni's team's going to run the ball in that sprint draw. Absolutely, and Dennis Franchoni likes to run the ball straight downhill, doesn't like to go around the tackles, in between the tackles. That's where he's always had success. Oh, there's some kissing up there. Kyle Field going to get some sugar and get some good because A&M, a 26-11 winner, and Fran gets off on the right foot. Got Utah coming up next. Reggie McNeil, over 50%. Beat down 41 to 9. They lost it. Greg Jones said 
will remember that. We talked about it in practice, and it'll be a different outcome this time. I ask you, can Greg Jones back up his words? Oh, he can back it up big time. I love this. He cuts to the left. Now, the power and strength right here. Let me give you a little something to take that oh. home to. Every, every great back does this. They make the defensive player absorb the punishment. What a great run. Right here, Earl Campbell. He's less than a year removed from ACL problems, too. Greg Jones looked like a million bucks, and Lorenzo Booker looked pretty good, too. What a changeup. What a burst. Well, he does just explodes through that bunch defense Tar Heels in a world of hurt 37 to nothing the Seminole defense rolling a little bit later on in the speed rush we'll talk about just how good the Seminoles are for Michigan State Jeff Smoker returning at quarterback worked his way up the depth chart to lose the rush finds Kyle Brown 59 yards see what he did though Jeff Smoker having patience you can tell he's a veteran quarterback finds his open receiver bides time I thought Jeff Smoker had a nice day today Chad Munson did as well threw for over 300 yards finds Philip Reed here Reed would punch it in a couple of plays later Western Michigan out of the Mac had a tie to 14 17 14 now tip drill Darren Barnett comes up with it Michigan State would take over as a result. And now, a 17-14 game. Smoker to Ajim Shubai. Shubai, goodbye. So long. Point after no good. 23-14 game. On the banks of the old Red Cedar, there's a school that's known to all. And on this Saturday, the Spartans played some good ball. Michigan, 26-21. Smoker leads the band. I can recycle there with it. Western, Western Michigan Western got 333 Florida. yards, though. Michigan State taking the next step must play better defensively when they get in Big Ten play. We just saw the Jeff Smoker come back. He stayed one of the leading contenders in the ACC, the Cavaliers, but that's the reigning ACC Player of the Year, Matt Shaw, who went down and did not come back. So Anthony Martinez leads a long pass to Art Thomas, and then Wally Lundy, versatile back, going in. Offensive coordinator Ron Prince getting his team going there. Cavaliers, 27 to nothing. Shaw, shoulder injury, did not return. Watch the rest of the game in a sling. Duke has now lost 26 straight ACC games. Little Big Ten, Big East matchup down in Morgantown, Wisconsin, and West Virginia. You must be sound in the kicking game. Alex Lewis from the Badgers storming through. Alex Lewis had a huge impact on this game. Kareem Timbers recovers. Badgers on top 7-0. And there was much rejoicing. I really like this Quincy Wilson, number three. I love the way he ran. Broke tackles, not a big guy, but right up the middle, 10-yard touchdown. And West Virginia was up 10-7. to 17-10 now, and Jim Sorge finds Lee Evans coming back off that knee. It's good to see him back. The strength of Lee Evans, particularly in his hands, he would not be denied on this play. And what you do when you get in here? Hand it to Anthony Davis, the scoring machine. His 18th career 100-yard rushing game in the past two seasons. No back has gained more yardage than Anthony Davis. Wisconsin comes from behind, 20 24-17 win in Morgantown. Reigning co-champions in the Big Ten, Iowa, taking on Ben Roethlisberger in Miami. Nathan Chandler having to fill the shoes of Brad Banks. Behind Darren Mickens for the touchdown. Roethlisberger hit eight of his first nine, but then got the pick bug. Well, the Iowa's defense started to get a little pressure, and that's what they did all of last year as well. Opportunistic defense, getting turnovers. They did it again today. Four times they picked off the fine Red Hawk quarterback, Roethlisberger, throwing the interception there and setting up the Hawkeyes on the doorstep. Fred Russell crashing in, and Nathan Chandler played very well. I thought he was very efficient, sitting in the pocket. It's a different offense for Iowa, but steps up, finds Maurice Brown, touchdown, Iowa up 28-1-3. And a lot of that has to do with their head coach, Kurt Ferentz. Yep. Building an offensive line, building from the bottom up, had to replace a lot of people, but they're still very competitive. This is a pretty good football team. Iowa got Buffalo coming up next. They should go to 2-0. and Not that I want to go out on a limb. <laughs> Fort War, Missouri and Illinois. This was a great finish in this one. Mizzou with a 14-9 lead. John Future, big 10 in passing last year, giving it to Abraham Halsey. He went for a buck 39 on the day, did Halsey. Future now looking for Kelvin Hayden. We switched over to the fourth quarter now. Two-point conversion was no good, but the Illini all clad in orange, ready for hunting season perhaps. Up by one, Brad Smith, Darius Outlaw, the former starting quarterback from Mizzou. Mizzou makes its two-point conversion. Seven-point lead. Butcher almost saved his team, but Bryant couldn't hang on. Melvin had been in his hands, but just couldn't reel it in. 
Von Turner's team played well, but they fall 22-15. Missouri schedule, they have a great opportunity to start 5-0 before they get Nebraska. Down in Stark Vegas, the Mighty Ducks coming in. You think those orange things are something. Look at those yellow uniforms. This is Nick Turner. Hey, Oregon once had a 28-0 lead in this game. Jackie Sherrill's team all the way back 28-21. Here's Kellen Clemens' mark to Matt Clover. It's a nice job of blocking down the field to play. I love to see the team effort when the player's blocking one another. Here on the option, Oregon again. Quarterback keeps it. Five and five. Score. Two quarterback system worked for Mike Bellotti down in Starkville. And Oregon beats Mississippi State. And think about this, guys. Oregon swept a two-game series from State. USC swept a two-game series from Auburn. 2000-2001. UCLA did likewise to Alabama. You have to go back to 1997. When Tennessee beat UCLA by the last time. An SEC team beat a Pac-10 team. Let's give it up for the West Coast. They've got the bragging rights over the SEC. And the mountains. Battle for the Rockets, Colorado, Colorado State, Bradley Van Pelt. Talk smack, talk to talk, walk to walk. Touchdown pass, put CSU up by seven. Joel Klatt to Derek McCoy. Boy, Joel Klatt to walk in a huge game. Incredible. He's got a beautiful touch, particularly on the long passes. I was very impressed the way this first-time starter played tonight. Former baseball player. Colorado's had trouble throwing the ball the last couple of years. Klatt, well, well, Klatt didn't have any trouble throwing the ball. He went for over 400 yards. Nice Donahue there, Colorado, up two touchdowns. Platt again now after CSU had trimmed it to seven. Derek McCoy's wide open and running free. 78 yards, he houses it. But you know, Colorado CSU, Bradley Van Pelt's going to answer. Look at this warrior, breaks two and three tackles, has the speed to get out. I'm telling you, this kid's a linebacker. He's a linebacker under center. That has to stick in your claw. That guy talks, and then he sticks it to you, and he beats you every year until Bobby Purify turns the corner. And the Buffs go up 42-35. For the first time since Gary Barnett arrived in Boulder, Colorado wins a season opener. They do it in front of 76,219 at Invesco Field. This game already. Indiana, the Big Ten coming into Rensselaer Field. UConn making its way toward the Big East. And the Big East hopes the very near future, given what's happened there. Dan Orlovsky to O'Neill Wilson. The Huskies up 10-0. Third quarter, Terry Collins. How many tackles Terry Collins going to break One, here? One, two, three, four, well, the line. five, six. I mean, he's just not Seven. going down. That's physical running, Eight. Mark. I've been calling him the Alameda of UConn football. He might be the Emeka Okafor. He's just relentless in traffic. Orlovsky hits Wilson 24 to 3. Jerry DiNardo's team just getting it handed to them in Rensselaer Field, and the debut is a successful one for Randy Edsel and the Huskies, 34 to 10, the final. Matt Lavecchio, the Notre Dame transfer, making the start for the Hoosiers, threw for 200 yards plus, but in a losing effort. 